As we head into the mountains with the swollen Ganges below us, it begins to rain intermittently. In some places the road is barely navigable, making it difficult for vehicles to negotiate the tricky terrain. A few hours later, and the first signs of the impact of the floods. An entire settlement buried in the mud. There's hardly anyone here. It's like we've entered a ghost town. This used to be a thriving settlement. But just look at what's left of it. This, for instance, was a local college. But it's covered almost all the way up to the roof. And I can look in through the window of what must have been a classroom. And all I can see is mud. This is the highway to the worst affected areas and the traffic's at a standstill. A part of the road has been washed away, leaving people stranded at both ends. The bulldozers are at work and it's going to take a while to clear the debris. It's frustrating as most of the cars and trucks are carrying supplies to the flood victims. We're taking biscuits, clothes and medicines for the victims, this volunteer says. We're headed all the way to Badri. Those that have got out have done it the hard way. An amateur video shows how some of them trekked through forests and slopes. But there are some for whom being rescued is a mixed blessing. This two-year-old girl was brought here by rescue workers. Both her legs are broken and her parents are missing. The hospital staff are doing their best to keep her spirits up. What to do with this? She was having a lot of agony and she was afraid, sick of though, and she had a lot of bad memories of the site. Actually, she has lost her parents. We don't know about anything about her parents or relatives or somebody close to her. It's been one of India's biggest rescue operations. More than a hundred have been evacuated. The focus is now shifting on those left behind. Local communities some of which have been completely destroyed. 